Hi, my name is Nadia Lutz. I am a traditional naturopath and I practice functional neurology. I lost my sense of smell and taste in early 2022. And I put together a bunch of different videos uh, to activate different cranial nerves in different parts of the brain. Back when everyone was just saying, hey, just smell essential oils and it'll all come back. Because I truly believe that if you activate your cranial nerves and the areas of the brain that are um, affected by uh, the virus, then you can have a better effect. Uh, since then, I've been introduced to an amazing um, device, a terahertz device. Uh, this little baby penetrates seven to 12 inches, so it can really activate uh, the cranial nerves. So I thought I'd make another video because people are still reaching out, me, out at me for the first four that I did on um, anosmia and parosmia. So uh, this is not medical advice. It's not a medical device. This is for educational purposes only. I'm going to play a formal uh, medical disclaimer here, and then we'll get to business. Medical disclaimers. iTerra Classic and iTerra Pro are not medical devices. The information provided on our website is for educational purposes only and does not substitute for professional medical advice. Please consult a medical professional or healthcare provider if you are seeking medical advice, diagnoses, or treatment. Priif International shall not be liable for risks or issues associated with using or acting upon the information on our website. Priif International shall not be liable or responsible for the actions, misrepresentations, or negligence of our members who are independent contractors. All right, got that business out of the way. I'm going to talk a little bit about what terahertz is and tell you the benefits of it. And then we're going to dive right into the brain and talk about various areas that you can activate um, to help you get your sense of smell and taste back or uh, parosmia, either one. Uh, terahertz resonates slightly above the infrared spectrum and it can penetrate seven to 12 inches. Um, I've been practicing laser acupuncture since 2001 and that either uses cold laser or infrared technology and that penetrates maybe an inch. So I already knew the areas to activate with the brain with that, but this, it just works so much quicker. Uh, it works on some scalar energy. There's also a optical crystal tube on the inside and there's heat. So the combination of the terahertz chip, the heat coming down the tube, um, it can really penetrate nicely. There's a little chart at the top that shows you where the terahertz gap is. Um, it's been studied by scientists around the world since 2014, and it's interesting they all have different uh, things that they call it because it resonates with a healthy cell. It's the same frequency as a healthy cell. So uh, the American science call it the wave of life, Japanese light of life, and the Chinese scientists uh, God's band. So some of the benefits are um, it activates healthy cells and um, it optimizes unhealthy cells because it is resonating at that same frequency. Um, it can get in there with the heat and the terahertz into the bone marrow to activate stem cells. And it really just helps the body increase the cell healing and the immune system. Um, and it does a fabulous job at unblocking um, different areas with meridians and points and acupressure points. It improves circulation and microcirculation. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. And it's been shown in clinical studies to help optimize glands, which is very important for the brain, right? We want to optimize uh, the neurotransmitters and that actually comes in the thyroid and everything that comes into play as well. If you're familiar with traditional Chinese medicine, it uh, shows that it's been able to reduce humidity or moisture or the ability to um, hold too much water in the body. So these are clinical test reports, uh, 62 of them from the Beijing Research Institute of Chemical Technology. It does a fabulous job at reducing inflammation um, and activating different areas of the brain as well as other things. So the reason this is important is because with any neuro issues, we want to reduce inflammation in the body, okay? So simply by uh, waving the wand up and down the spine, you're activating all of the nerves because they innervate through the spine and they all attach to different organs, right? So we know that this uh, virus has many different effects on many different organs as well as the brain and the uh, cranial nerves. So simply activating the spine can help a lot. Another uh, great feature 
is when you take a glass of water and you charge like you see in the video below, uh, it turns it into terahertz water. And if you charge a glass, you drink it, you wait 15 minutes and you look under live blood analysis, you can see how above how uh, the blood cells go from being clumpy and sticky to very formed and moving uh, flu more fluid. And the reason this is important is because it's gonna be able to uh, get fresh oxygen to your brain and it'll create a linear structural water molecule. It's important when you're doing this to have very high quality water because it has been shown in an NIH study, terahertz water um, that is remineralized, your body will absorb up to 50% more water. So uh, you wanna make sure it's clean, fresh water. So you're not um, having a negative effect with any toxins. So it reduces free radicals, increases the oxygen content, increases the absorption, and um, just helps the body overall. Now, when you first start using the wand, I recommend that you do exactly like shown and you charge two glasses of water, you drink them, and then you charge on each palm for uh, 20 to 30 seconds and each sole of the foot for 20 to 30 seconds. You wanna make sure your body's getting used to terahertz frequency and you're not just dumping right into the brain areas. So I would do that for a week or two and then I would do this whole sheet uh, for a week or two. Again, just 20 to 30 seconds, it's gonna prime the body uh, to receive other things. Okay, so let's dive right in. In my practice, I deal a lot with people who um, have an osmium and porosity, a loss of sense of smell and taste, but also with neurodegenerative issues. Um, and, you know, really I dive down into some practical approaches with functional neurology. So you can, this is just one picture. You can see how the cranial nerves are attached from the brain stem and then they're going out to the jaw. There are also many others coming from different areas. We'll take a look at the next picture to see that. So this is kind of where I like to charge on the brain. And after we talk about this and why it's important, then I'm gonna add in other things like essential oils and things like that to make it more effective to activate different cranial nerves. The more we can make our brain wake up and pay attention, the better off we are at reactivating those nerves and um, you know, getting our sense of smell and taste back, reducing the brain fog and all of the other issues. The first area I like to do is uh, the frontal lobe. So that's right here on the forehead. Uh, it's actually fabulous. You just blow right here. And then you can do a figure eight around the eyes. And that activates a lot of different cranial nerves. I'm going to pause here and talk about some contraindications with the wand. You would not want to use this on anything, um, any implants in the body whatsoever. So if you have metal in the body, you have lens implants, you have hearing aids, you have heart implants, you have breast implants, mesh, metal, any implants whatsoever, you'd want to stay away from that area. So let's take the eyes, for example. Let's say someone had surgery and has a, an actual lens implant on them. They never come off, right? If you had contacts, you would take them off. You would want to avoid the eyes. But you would also want to avoid coming from the back of the head, right? Because penetration is seven to 12 inches and you'd wanna watch the direction anywhere else you go. If you have metal in your mouth, you would wanna avoid that, right? Whether they're amalgams or anything from a root canal or anything like that. If you have any um, fusion in your spine that's metal, you wanna avoid that area, okay? So if your body has organically produced whatever's in your body, then you don't have implants. If someone has gone in and put them into your body, whether it be plastic, metal, fluids, or whatever, that would be considered an implant. By fluids, I mean like a breast implant, okay? That's how I'm defining it. So after um, the figure eight around the eyes to activate the cranial nerves, the optic nerve up there here, you can then go up the nose. And that's fabulous because it goes right to the brain stem. The throat is really nice. You would start from the ear, you'd go down the throat, hit in the middle and the back. That's going to activate the neurotransmitters and the hormones. Uh, back to the frontal lobe, we have the temples, right? So the combination of here and here, it's getting right through here, activates the optic nerve and a bunch of other ones. And then the ears, we have a lot of cranial nerves coming up through the ears and they innervate into the eyes and the throat and the neck. Also, as a bonus, you have your whole body represented on your ear as acupressure points. So uh, that's great to use as well. 
Now, probably one of my favorite areas is the cerebellum. If you reach back on your um, head, right at your hairline, you can feel two knobs. That's your cerebellum. You have a right and a left. Uh, this is great if you have one-sided issues. So if you um, are getting any eye twitches from the virus or any clogging of the ears, you definitely want to spend extra time on the cerebellum. All inputs to the brain go up the spine through the cerebellum and forward, right? So the more time you can spend on that cerebellum, the better. Then we have the jaw. We have this trigeminal nerve here. It goes down in the vagus nerve. Um, it works great because it also innervates up into the taste buds and the smell, right? So that's a, a really good area to do. And then, like I said, you have your whole spine, okay? Let's dive down a little deeper into this and get more specific, okay? So your sensory brain is 60% of your brain. So if we activate these cranial nerves by different sensations, we can wake up the nerves that aren't working as well as they should with this virus, right? So the olfactory nerve is coming up the front like this. So doing that frontal lobe while we say smell oil or do some of the other things might help. For the optic nerve, you can do letter identification or you can do colored glasses. I'll go over this more in detail, so don't worry. For um, the trigeminal nerve, um, I have a vibrating toothbrush. You can bite down on it to wake up that trigeminal nerve. You can see how it sits right next to the, um, the olfactory and everything. For the facial nerve, we can activate that area to optimize the sense of smell and taste as well. And um, the glossopharyngeal nerve. So we're gonna add in all sorts of different tastes and swallowing and humming for the vagus. Let's get more specific. So while you're charging the different areas that I showed, this is just some pictures that shows that, um, here's a whole list of different things we can do. We wanna keep it novel. You don't wanna do the same thing every day. We want your brain to wake up and pay attention, right? So like I mentioned, you could bite on the vibrating toothbrush. You could plug one nostril and you could uh, try to smell, I smell oils on either side. It's okay if you don't smell it, we're gonna be adding other things in. You could try to identify smells. Um, you know, citrus is really strong and powerful. So maybe you actually try chewing on the rind a little bit to see if you can get the taste involved. You can add salt or candy. I have a, um, a slide below, we'll talk about that. Since uh, the sense of smell and taste is a little disturbed, you can take an oil and you can rub it behind and in front and actually on the cartilage. And then you can take your wand and you can charge into it. So it's actually getting into um, your system rather than just topically, and that can help wake it up. Another really thing that's worked really well for me when I um, had anosmia is I would wear colored glasses. And now I have people wear them while I wand, right? So green and orange are very uh, grounding and soothing and calming. So if you're in, if you need some grounding, you could use the green or the orange. And again, you could wand at the same time that you are wearing colored glasses. And then if you need to wake your brain up more, then you would put on red or yellow glasses. Um, if you're already feeling kind of ramped up, you might want to go with the green or the orange, right? The, um, and the yellow, kind of like the seeing the sun, making it grounding. Um, don't underestimate the color glasses. They can have a huge effect on getting your sense of smell and taste back. Okay, nostril, we're trying to calm the central nervous system down. We're trying to reduce inflammation, right? So nostril breathing does just that. Breathing in the nose, and out the nose, calms the central nervous system. It activates a vagus nerve, which will put you in rest and digest versus fight or flight, right? With this virus, we've been in fight or flight for a while and our brain has started to kind of like shut down a little bit, shut down some of these cranial nerves. So we wanna calm the central nervous system down and wake up the nerves at the same time. When we breathe through our mouth, our brain thinks we're in danger, right? So that's why it even becomes even more difficult when you're sick and you can't breathe very well. When you breathe through your nose, your brain's saying, oh, everything's okay. If you're breathing through your mouth, it's sort of like you're running away from a saber-toothed tiger and your brain's like, okay, what's happening next, right? So nostril breathing in and out the nose is fabulous. And on the exhale, you can hum, which activates three to five different cranial nerves. So you breathe in, 
and hmm, or you could gargle, right? Shoulder shrugs is great because it activates those cranial nerves. So we're just trying to wake up as many different parts of the body as possible. So let's add a little stack in. So maybe we're doing, um, put on some glasses, we're doing nostril breathing, we're humming, we're smelling, just in case we have, we've already put some on, we're biting and we're breathing. Mm. So we're trying to activate as many different things as possible. Now, if you have a frequency device, you can play nerve stimulators or calming the central nervous system down. You can play vagus nerve. You could activate cerebellum or different parts if you have that. Also, you can keep the brain active by doing different twisters or identification of things or multiplication. You want to start slow with this and increase time as your body tolerates it, working up to 15 to 20 minutes a day. Here's an example of different ways you can... Um, have the same inputs in different areas, right? If you can't smell peppermint, well, maybe if you chewed on mint leaves with the uh, honey in your mouth or chewed on gum and tea, you're getting mint in all different types of forms, right? Same with cinnamon. And here's this identification, right? So you could have different bottles of essential oils while you're wanding. You could close your eyes and you could smell the essential oils and just try to identify. It's okay if you don't, but your brain, even though you can't identify it, it's still giving your brain information, okay? And here's an example of um, stacking things on, right? So he has a vibration plate. He has color glasses. He's doing one-sided smell. He's doing nostril breathing, humming, and he's doing the terahertz all to wake up the brain. Okay, so the goal is to optimize your brain and change your life, right? We want to get our sense of smell and taste back. And I love this quote by Stephen Hawkins, intelligence is the ability to adapt to change, right? Something's changed in our brain. We have to adapt, but we definitely want our brain back. We want our full capacity back, right? So practicing these will really help. Uh, again, I'm not making any claims, but it's helped a lot of people. It doesn't happen overnight, right? Unless you've just lost your sense of smell and taste and you get on it right away, you might see changes happening. But for those people that have had this going on for one or two years, it's going to take a long time to get it back. And that's okay. Just stick with it. Don't give up. Um, if you get Say you get a little whiff of a peppermint somewhere. We'll use that peppermint and start doing a bunch of other different things. Get the gum, get the candy, get the other, all different areas to try to um, capitalize on that little whiff of what you got, right? Now, something you're also going to need to do is do some lifestyle changes because we need to reduce all inflammation in the body for at least like all of it for six to eight weeks. Um, so the things that cause inflammation pesticides, toxicities, air pollution, mold, fungus, um, eating sugar, dairy, gluten, alcohol. We really want a clean diet, clean organic pesticide free food, nourish the body, try to get rid of all processed foods to eliminate all of the toxins in our body, right? Because the toxins are only going to make it take longer and longer and keep that inflammation in the brain really high. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any questions about the wand, uh, feel free to reach out. I have a Facebook group here in the bottom, my Terra Care Health Facebook group. There's lots of information um, about the terahertz wand. And I'd be happy to help you place an order. That's my group. So if you join it, you can always uh, find me there. I'm answering most questions there. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. And be patient. Stick with it. You will be able to get this resolved. Thanks for tuning in.